Incredible. What was the name of the theater in Dallas? Dallas. You were at Reunion. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Are we rolling? Okay. Well, Robin, you came to Dallas not long ago, and I was out of town and didn't get to see you. Did it go? Did it go good? Went well. I lived. <laughs> it was wonderful. I played the, uh, the Rainbow Musical, I think. You were there long enough to get a Texas accent? I did. I'm just so happy to be there. I was, it was great. I went all over Texas, played uh, Lubbock. Lubbock was great. I have a little t-shirt that says Ski Lubbock. <laughs> uh, I have uh, played San Antonio, Austin, Houston. It was great because uh, I've never been to Texas before. And Catch I you some boots and a hat. No, ma'am. Never bought the boots. <laughs> just a lot of hats, though. A couple of hats from Gillies and Billy Bob's. And Hey, yeah, Billy Bob's. Billy Bob, what an incredible place. Yeah, you check that out. 25 bars, no waiting. <laughs> 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 Lots of people at rodeo, kind of, it was great to see people like 2 o'clock in the morning trying to get on a bull, and the bull's going, next. It's <laughs> incredible. But we are here to talk about the world according to Garp, and you are Garp, and this is no Mork from Ork. No, ma'am. I wonder, Robin, isn't it pretty risky, though, for your kind of, of performer to do this kind of thing where audiences, if they don't know anything about Garp, they come in, they're looking for Robin Williams, and they find something different. Hopefully that's a positive experience, you know, like, um, it's, I uh, hope, uh, the film isn't just me, I mean, there's such a power to the film, I think, that they'll be pleased by it. I mean, there's such a positive life force to it, I think it'll, uh, I think people walk away feeling very good about it, having not read the book or not knowing what it's about, it still has a good, it's a good story. As far as uh, the the character of Garp and everything, uh, you are noted for being a performer who just thrives on improvisation and on spontaneity and that sort of thing. Now, is this story we've been told about George Roy Hill uh, calling for a rap when you started to improvise? Is that yes. a true story? Oh, very much so. But it served a purpose. I mean, the reason he held me back from that is for two reasons. If we can't, if you improvise, sometimes you the story would get frazzled. It would get fray at the ends. And also, it forced me to go inside and really kind of settle down a little bit. And by doing that, you settle into yourself and find things internally that you normally wouldn't be. When you're improvising, you're going out, you're looking. It's like being going, talking to flowers, going, how are you doing, please, cough. You know, when you're playing like that, you're going out. But by stopping that, it forces the energy to implode, and you find, you explore yourself. Either memories or, you know, different emotions. Some of the, there were some very painful scenes in the film that you couldn't really improvise as much as you really had to just kind of settle down and really... Let it out, kick out the jams in yourself. But given your, I mean, if he hadn't done that, if he hadn't called for rap, would you have tried to do more improvisation? I probably would have, till all of a sudden he would go, he'd make the, he makes his face when he doesn't like something, he'd go, and he'd go, okay. He probably, he let me do that one day, let me, and then they, they just made the point, it was all over. He had to, you know, just push it to us. I just tried that one time, and he made the point, and then we had to get down to some serious work. Why did you see yourself in this role? Because of, um, initially, the first thing that really hooked me in was this wrestling, because I loved wrestling so much in high school. Collegiate wrestling, which is different than, like, professional wrestling. People going, <laughs> no. But in collegiate wrestling is really an incredibly disciplined sport. Some people say it's kind of sadomasochistic, but it's, it's actually, it's a wonderful combination of training, endurance, you know, mental agility. It's a, people who are wrestlers are a very bizarre breed of people, and that's what originally hooked me into it. They're usually very individualistic. They usually, um, because no one comes to see your wrestling matches. <laughs> usually it's, you're in a small, steamy room. <laughs> it's always bizarre. I don't know if we can put this on TV, but I used to have my, my own one of my mother and father come see me wrestle once. And every time I was my way, I was winning, but every so often the coach would yell, crotch ride, crotch ride. And no, mom's going, no, that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a wonderful sport. I mean, I really loved it. It's a great, it gives you a great feeling about yourself. And that's what hooked me into it. And after that, as I got further into the book, his soul and heart is incredible. He's such a sensitive, emotionally strong man that I really just got hooked into it. Did you ever have a chance to discuss Garp with John Irving? Yeah, he, at first he, he wasn't coming to the see, see the shooting. Then he came to see a couple of dailies and he really hooked into the film. He, he would sometimes come up to me and he'd outline certain passages in the book if, if that he, I would just read, it was like reading a little passage of the Bible before you uh, shot a scene, but I would read a scene, just because there's so much narrative in the book, the narrative helps you really, for scenes where you had no dialogue, he would, it would help you just kind of prepare yourself for just when you have nothing to say at all, just to have a whole mental attitude that made it come to life. Does Irving like the movie? I think so very much, which is a great compliment, I think. 
I think he feels very positive about it, which makes me feel like, whew, okay. Hey, Mr. Tolstoy, how do you like that play? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> hey, Mr. Melville, how is that? That's some fish, huh? <laughs> Robin, this uh, is a very stressful time in your life, mm -hmm. and um, you know we're we're all um, you know we're all pulling for you to to get through this. Um, how do you get through such stressful times? What what do you what is your strength? How do you get through it? Well, my wife, she helps a lot. She's a real grounding influence. I have a ranch, a cattle ranch up in Napa, California, which is real wonderful. That helps a lot. It's hard to be real stressful when you have 600 acres going and lots of owls going, who are you? And you're out there and it's just, it's so calm that you, you lose, there's no pressures there for me. And when you're on the back of a mule and the mule's going, what's your business? <laughs> you know, it's wonderful. That helps, um, running sometimes, swimming, and good friends, really good friends. Christopher Reeve's a good friend, he helps a lot. By having good friends, it always, you, you can get through anything. Him and all my friends, they really help incredibly. And you think have, you've changed much in I the last... I think I've mellowed a little bit. I think I've kind of... I've, I feel a little bit less frenetic. But I've, I feel a little bit... I feel a lot happier, I think. I mean, I feel... I don't know. I feel, it's once again friends who've helped that. I've kind of... I've really realized the value of that. Before, I just kind of took it for granted. Why, we're all pals, we're buddies. And all of a sudden, these things get a little tough, and you start to really have to say, hey, you know, they, they call you or you... You keep in contact, or you go to the ranch once again. People come up there, and you sit and you just talk. It's wonderful. It's a very peaceful time. And that, that's what keeps you, for all the insanity that I do sometimes, or the, the playing, the sanity really, I have to recharge. Because if I didn't, I'd be like, it's, like, it's almost like a car battery. I'd be like, how are you doing? Hey, Jesus, I don't know. I have to get emotionally jump-started. But then, this, it helps to recharge. And this film helped to recharge me, too, because the people in it, are so, so warm and kind. And the, the people on the set were wonderful. When, when a guy on, on the set married, uh, married one, of the, one of the crew married another member of the crew. So it's like it was a wonderful family. And that helped. And I also want to start my own family. That film also got me going on that going. It feels like a little home family starter kit. Uh, is your wife pregnant? Is that what you're saying? Not yet. I don't, is she? <laughs> is the rabbit dead? <laughs> There's a rabbit going, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, what, you know? <laughs> no. Oh, I get strange Gene vibes. Gene Dixon going. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of strange vibes, Robin. I hope Just... soon. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> okay. I'm firing all the shots I can. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to Fort Wood, too. I love that. Listen, uh, did you meet Billy Bob and Spencer? No, I didn't get to. Uh, okay, you got to come back, and we'll all go to well, Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Oh, Mr. Weir, come over here. Is, it, what, is that the Eiffel Tower? That's just for the key ads. That was, <laughs> it's Good incredible. Kid. Big. I stayed at the Hotel Anatole there. That was that place. The Sistine Chapel is designed by Neiman Marcus. It was incredible. <laughs> it was like, oh, those tapestries, you like those? Those are just, there's a few nice things up there. It was incredible. You got our number pretty good, Robin. Oh, you were along, but you got our number. Lots of names like Bill Bob, Joe, Gene, Joe, Carl, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> but you can call me Chuck. <laughs> Okay, listen, if I don't call this uh, stop, they're going to throw both of us out. I know, we're well, really. <laughs> only got 24 more to go. Hey, well, it is really terrific meeting you, Robin. You, and I think come Academy Award time. <laughs> oh, God. I, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say don't, it. Don't even touch like voodoo time. No gri gri, no gri gri. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Oh, boy, now I'll take another big steaming light. <laughs> okay. All right. And, uh, and all this, this is different now. No flowers and none of that. Flowers, okay, no, 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 no. I don't want to. We'll change them just to piss people off. Okay, light is pretty adequate, is it? Okay, all right. Re I'll do reactions first. I was with him and he loved tennis. Anatole loved tennis. You tried. I did ride a mechanical bull, though, on a real low setting. <laughs> I think I was so afraid. It was on like, Okay, yeah, okay, all right. Um, so we're doing sound now, all right. Isn't it a little bit risky for your kind of comedy actor to go into this kind of thing that has a lot of serious drama to it? So what do you remember about your trip to Dallas? 
girl named Betty Lou. <laughs> 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 all right, okay. She had a lovely two piece outfit, okay. boots. That's all she wore. Hold it. <laughs> and the spurs, the marks didn't come off for a year. Okay. Listen, don't let me run out of tape. All right. Oh, okay. no. Robin, why did you see yourself in this role? The toys. Okay, okay. all right. You're going through a very stressful time in your life. What is it that gets you through these bad times? How do you get through these bad times, Robin? Okay, uh, one more. Did you ever discuss this role with John Irving? Okay, that should do it. All right. Thank you.